Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 2 of the Marco Book Club. In this video we're going to be discussing Sapiens uh, by Yuval Noah Harari. This is one of the best books I've read in a long time and I'm super stoked to share it with you. I know it's been a while since I shared my last video and that's for a number of reasons. First and foremost, um, we've been traveling a ton. As you've seen, we've been in Korea, Jamaica, Wales, all over the place. Uh, and secondly, because I was trying to think about the best format to do this book club. Um, I know we started off with a Goodreads discussion group and that works fine and I'm still going to keep using that. However, I thought up a new way which I want to experiment with. Uh, and essentially, I'm going to put the discussion questions for this book in the comments section and then you guys, as you read or when you finish the book, can go back in and add in your answers. Then I'm going to take some of the questions, uh, some of the answers to those questions and, and pull them out, respond to them and, and respond to my own answers to the questions in a second video. That video will come out in a few weeks. And the third reason for the delay on this video is because I, I was going to do it for another book. I, I had mentioned in the last video Hunter S. Thompson's Hell's Angels, one of my favorites, uh, because I, I originally kind of made this book club to talk about the books that impacted me the most. But I realized that if I was just going to talk about the books that impacted me the most, we would be forever in the past. And I wanted to talk about something that was contemporary. And so, um, so basically, I stopped reading Hunter S. Thompson's book and I started anew. And I came up with this book. Uh, you might recognize it from the latest video we've just published about our trip to Wales uh, in Hay on Wye Bookshop. I came across this book and instantly knew that this was going to be the next one for the book club. There's a couple reasons why I chose this book. First of all, I've heard a lot about it. It's apparently really big in um, Silicon Valley. It's been discussed a lot in uh, kind of intellectual circles. So I'd heard a little bit about it. But secondly, and most importantly, I was looking for a book that would give me some perspective on the current moment in human history. Of course, there's a lot of people with different perspectives. We're not really feeling a lot of global unity at the moment. There's a lot of conflict. So I really wanted something that would help me get out of sort of the us versus them mentality that's been plaguing our political discourse and find something that would give me uh, a really, really broad perspective to pop me out of my filter bubble, challenge my assumptions, and, and give me uh, basically the long view of history that could help me interpret the present moment better. And this book, Sapiens, delivers so well on all fronts. Now, I know this book has been criticized. It has been criticized uh, often because it doesn't really present anything that does not exist in other books. There are certainly a million history books. Uh, there's a lot of books on evolutionary biology. Uh, but what this book does well is it covers the most ambitiously broad scope uh, in, in a way that is easy to read. Uh, it's, not, it's not an easy book. Uh, the subject is vast, human history. Holy shit, that's got to be like, you would think that could be like 15 books, but he accomplishes the entirety of human history in 450 pages. And he does that because he's got this, this prose that's lucid, clear, and, and at times very lyrical. It moves so quickly, um, but it's able to do each period of time justice. It balances breadth and depth, to put it uh, succinctly. And as a writer, I can tell you that is not easy to do. It's never easy to know what to include and what to exclude, but this book accomplished it marvelous, marvelously, marvelous, marvelously, blah, blah, marvelously. And I think part of the reason is due to the author himself. Mr. Harari is a unique character. He is uh, an Oxford trained professor at the University of Jerusalem, but he's also an atheist. He's also a vegan. He's gay. He meditates two hours a day in 30 days a year silent retreat, and he lives on an agricultural cooperative in, uh, in Israel. So he's got a really unique perspective. I, I don't think any of those things in and of themselves make his perspective unique, but I think the overall reason why I like the book and why I respect his perspective is just kind of that the sum is greater than the parts, both in the book and for the author. So what I want to do is give a synopsis of the book, an overview of the main parts, and then leave you with some discussion questions which I will put in the comment section and you can respond to in due time. So the book begins with a discussion of a fact that we've often overlooked but perhaps deliberately forgotten because of shame, which is that 100,000 years ago there were six species of humans and today there is just one. What happened to the other five? Were they exterminated in mankind's first genocide? Or did we intermarry with them and essentially absorb these other species uh, into what is now Homo sapiens? That seems like a pretty simple question. Uh, obviously, we would prefer not to have committed a genocide. But uh, what this book does is take something like that and show you the nuance and controversy behind all these different questions. 
For example, uh, it's obviously preferable not to have committed a genocide. However, the latter is actually more politically explosive still because the, the idea that uh, Homo sapiens today have absorbed different species of humans in different proportions so that you have Neanderthals, you have Neanderthals in Europe, and you have um, Homo erectus in East Asia. That was the basis for social Darwinism and the Nazi belief that the Aryan race was genetically superior to other races. That's just the first controversy and the first major question in the book, but it is far from the last. The book marches forward questioning our very assumptions of society, like are we better off for having stopped being hunter-gatherers and settled into uh, sedentary civilizations? Or are we worse off still? And if so, why don't we go back? The ultimate question the book poses is, for all of the changes and all the progress of human history, are we any better off than we were when we were wandering the plains of Africa hundreds of thousands of years ago? To answer that question, Mr. Harari takes us through the three main revolutions of human history. The cognitive revolution in which our capacity for language allowed us to communicate and build larger and larger societies through the creation of myths. That is, that Homo sapiens can only rule the earth because we're able to believe in things that do not exist anywhere but our own mind. From the gods of ancient Egypt that caused people to build the pyramids, to the divine right of medieval kings, and even the very notion of human rights, something that we believe is inalienable, 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 is actually a construct of our mind that does not exist in human nature. And while that assertion might either be hard to believe or make you feel like you've been lied to by society, Harari suggests that this is a fundamental requirement for organizing humans in groups over 150 people, which is like our natural limit. To build a group bigger than 150 people, you have to create artificial myths uh, to basically create value systems for people to rally behind. Next, we talk about the agricultural revolution in which humans decide to settle down and form civilizations in Mesopotamia, Asia, and elsewhere uh, that form the basis of modern society. The author says that the dawn of agriculture might actually be the biggest mistake of human history and that man might not have just domesticated wheat, but that wheat might have domesticated man. It's a crazy thing to think about, especially when you consider that mankind now is uh, less healthy, works more, and is more depressed and alienated than we were as foragers. And third, the scientific revolution, which has transformed the entire planet, mankind, and set us up for the sequel to this book, Homo Deus, which talks about the coming merger of man and machine, hashtag singularity, with artificial intelligence and all of that jazz, and potential immortality of mankind, which is a crazy thought. But we're gonna stop before we get there because we only have one book per month, and uh, we're gonna do Homo Deus at a later date. I will just discuss the last part of the book, uh, which actually came between uh, the scientific revolution and the agricultural revolution, it was a part titled The Unification of Mankind. One of the underlying themes of this book club is a search for books that speak to our the global nature of modern society. And this section, The Unification of Mankind, talks about how we came from a bunch of disparate um, tribes and warring societies into a fairly cohesive global society that we live in now. And while that process of globalization is far from complete, uh, this book talks about three reasons or three forces that cause this unification, and they're not the ones that you expect. And those would be money, which often maligned as the source of all evil, Harari describes as the foundation of trust that allowed humans from different societies to come together in the first place. And secondly, empires, which Harari describes as the most enduring form of government in human history. And although currently there is a very anti-imperialistic mood, he believes that this is the exception to the rule, an aberration in the long picture of history. And thirdly, capitalism, which according to Harari is not just an economic principle, but a religion and the most enduring religion of humankind. That's all I'm gonna share with you now. If it sounds interesting, make sure you check out the book. Of course, please go to your local bookshop and buy local if possible. If you do decide to buy this on the internet, you can use the link in the info box, which is an Amazon affiliate link that allows you to support this channel financially at no additional cost to yourself. Essentially, it provides me a finder's fee for recommending you this book. So once you get the book, 
Upload a photo on Instagram with the hashtag Marco Book Club, uh, at Marco Ailing. Tag me, don't forget that. And send me a message and let me know what you think about the book. I will do my best to respond to you guys. I can't respond to everybody, but I will try to do my best. And if you watch another YouTuber who you think would be into this book club, please let me know who they are. Tag us on social media together and recommend a book for the two of us to read. So I'd like to make this more collaborative. I'd love to bring in other YouTubers, uh, but I need your recommendations. Lastly, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up share it with your friends, and subscribe, uh, and turn on notifications to make sure that you get updates for the next video in this series. So in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy uh, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. Happy reading, and I will see you guys soon. All right, peace.